In the first part of this experiment, we're looking at free fall again, but this time to see the effects of air resistance. So I have Tracker open. I'm going to import the free fall video. All right, so usually there's some sort of error with some of the frames, so you just click OK. Uh, then my video is sideways, so I need to rotate it. OK, so now our video looks right. And uh, you'll notice in the video there's a tennis ball and a ping pong ball, so you can track the motion of both of these objects and then see how they're affected by air resistance differently um, because the ping pong ball is obviously much lighter. So when we create a point mass, that will track one of them, and then we can create a second point mass to track the other one. So let's call this one the tennis ball, and then we can create a second point mass and we'll call that the ping pong. All right, so we have the two different masses. Now, it's going to, by default, give them the same symbol. That's probably confusing, so let me uh, change the footprint of it. Uh, so we have the diamond for the tennis ball, and maybe I'll make this one a circle. Okay, so now we have two different uh, footprints for them. You can change other aspects of it, but I'm going to just click OK for now. Okay, so we have two different markers, and then we can uh, shift between them over here, whichever one we happen to be tracking. Now, when you do the actual shift and click on it, you just have to click which one you're doing first. Right. So if I'm doing the tennis, I'll click tennis. And then over here, to look at the tennis, I can switch over to tennis. All right, now uh, we need to have a calibration and I didn't put a meter stick in the picture here because what I did instead was to measure the distance from the top of the railing down to the bottom here of the the cinder block and this distance which I have over here is 3.556 meters so let me add the calibration stick and I'm going to shift and click to put it on I'm gonna put it from here to here, and I'll adjust it in a second, and it was 3.556 meters. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in to make sure that I really have it labeled correctly, so let me move this up to the top edge of the railing and make sure that this is on the bottom of the ground down here. Okay, now it's a little bit of a judgment call. I, I think I measured probably straight down from the railing would be pretty close to here. And um, so I'm going to leave it basically where it is. Okay, so let me zoom back out. All right. So I have my calibration stick in there. And so I know that this distance is 3.556 meters, so then the, the correct values will come over here. Now, if you remember, what we cared about with free fall was how the velocity changed over time. So we want the time, and then we want velocity in particular in the y direction. So I'm going to click table, take off the x and y, and instead just put vy. That's all I'm really interested in. OK. Now the other thing that I didn't really go, I, th I don't think, went over in the video was set up the coordinate system. So these are the coordinate axes right here, and if I click on it, it'll show me where it puts them by default. And it, so it set the origin of the coordinate system over here. Now I want it where the ball is basically going to land, um, or about where the balls are going to land, which I think is around here. So I'm going to put it just there for now. Then I can uh, 
drag to see where it actually does land. Okay, so maybe it's closer to here, this level. All right, so now this, this is roughly in the right place. Um, now my, my values will make sense. Now this is positive, so what's going to happen is the, the, uh, the position of the ball is going to be decreasing as it comes down. So it's going to give me by default a negative velocity for these. I can change that if I flip the coordinates around. So if you click on the coordinate axis, you can actually rotate it around. And you'll notice when I did that, uh, and you can pay attention to the angle, so if you're having trouble centering it exactly, you want to make sure it's perfectly vertical. Um, you can actually adjust it here. So I've made it a 180 degree flip. Uh, which makes this the uh, essentially falling down will now be positive direction. Okay, so let me go back to the beginning and let's start our first clip where the ball starts to leave our hands, my hands. Okay, so it's want to make sure it's totally free. Looks to be about there, so I can start that, start the video there. Uh, now let's say I want to track the uh, tennis ball first. Oops, got the tennis ball highlighted, and it's just the usual process of shift and click, and shift and click, and shift and click, and so on. Now I'm not doing a very good job of this, but you you all know how to fix this later on. Okay, now I'll have a set of data, time and velocities. That data I can pull into the free fall data for the tennis ball. Okay, so you'll want the times here, the velocity and the y here. Here will be your theoretical curves. Uh, the, the, the spreadsheet here is set up so that you can input data on what the object is and it will produce the theor theoretical curves for either no air resistance or air resistance. So I've input the data of coefficient of, dr of drag. I'm assuming they're both perfectly spherical, which means the coefficient of drag is 0.5. I measured the radius of a tennis ball and actually I measured the diameter and divided it by two. And I did this with a pair of calipers, so it was pretty precise. And we get a radius of 0.0288 meters, uh, which means 2.88 centimeters. Uh, use that number to calculate the area, pi times the radius squared. And then uh, I looked up what is the density of the air for the current air conditions. Now for that, I had to go online. So here is the uh, lab instructions, and we have this link to calculated from current weather conditions for the density of air. That brings you to this page where you can input the temperature, the air pressure, and the dew point, and that will give you the density of air, so the 1.2384. So where do you get this information? I got this information from my favorite weather site, which is called darksky.net. And I like it because they give you uh, lots of good scientific information. And it, so this is the readout for the, the temperature over the and weather conditions over the course of the day, sunrise, sunset, uh, expected rainfall. And then it gives you a graph of what's happening with all of the important scientific weather conditions over the course of the day. So the atmospheric pressure <clears throat> was around 1024 millibars. It turns out that a millibar and a hectopascal is the same thing. So 1024 uh, goes in there. The, 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 the air temperature converted to Celsius, and then the dew point also 
from here it goes up. The dew point is also on here. So those factors determine how dense the air is, get the value 1.2384, and it will be the same for, for all of them. Uh, and then lastly, weighed the mass of the ball. Uh, it is 0 0.056 kilograms. And so from this data, the VT is the terminal velocity. It calculates what the terminal velocity should be for that ball. So when it gets to 26.1 meters per second, it should fall at that constant rate for the rest of its trip. OK, so what you do is take your data from the video, your T's and your VY's, and input them here. Okay, The theoretical curves will update, and you can compare the data to the theory. Now the light blue is the no air resistance, the blue is the air resistance, and you'll see there's not a whole lot of difference between the two. Right For a tennis ball, you don't get a huge effect of air resistance, which is why we didn't just do the tennis ball. We also looked at the ping pong ball. And for the ping pong ball, uh, the data is different. So 0.5 is the same. Radius is smaller, so the area calculation is going to be smaller. Same density of air, smaller mass, smaller terminal velocity. But you do it the same way. Get the time and the VY for the ping pong ball uploaded in here. And then you can see that the ping pong ball does actually uh, come much closer to, to terminal velocity than does the tennis ball. Okay, so this is essentially the approach to the free fall experiment. In the next video, I'll go through the projectile motion, which, which is using the same balls, but uh, looking at different data that we'll collect from Tracker.